All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this session is being recorded. Welcome to the Confo webinar, Smart Sheet for Project Management. This is a basic overview. Look for our future webinars to go into a little more advanced functionality. Uh, you can also go to our YouTube channel to see our other instructional videos on Smartsheet. Uh, we've covered workflows and a general overview if you're interested in seeing that. I'm Mike Fritch. You can see a little bit about me on the right there. Um, I've got about 30 years of experience in manufacturing and project management supply chain. Uh, at Confo, we've been using Smartsheet since 2008. And we found it so helpful that we began to use it for the benefit of our clients and became Smartsheet partners in 2016. So let's take a look and see what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, we'll start off and give you a quick overview of Confo and Smartsheet as a company. And we'll spend the bulk of our time doing a live walkthrough training session. Uh, finally, we'll review how to get started. Uh, we'll stop the recording there and then uh, stay on for a deeper dive for anybody who has questions. So we'll probably have about three minutes of slides and 17 minutes of show. So what is Smartsheet? Smartsheet is the world's leading SaaS enterprise work management platform. You use it to manage and automate collaborative work. Projects are a subset of that. That's one of the, one of the great elements of collaborative work that you wanna use Smartsheet for. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. So a little bit about Confo. We were founded in 2002. Uh, our name means joined in alliance from Latin uh, because we do a lot of work around collaboration between departments, functions, and companies. Uh, we're a project management, consulting, and technology implementation firm. Uh, two of our primary technology implementation services and products are Clearview, which reduces the cost, time, and risk to install capital tools or to start up factories. And Confo Smart Solutions, these are built on the Smartsheet platform and they give you targeted optimization and automation of your business processes for rapid results. Smartsheet is a company that is uh, present in over half of the Fortune 500. There's 10 million plus users. They're in over 190 countries. So where would you use Smartsheet in your company or in your teams? Really, virtually anywhere you're doing collaborative work, you could really benefit from Smartsheet. And we're gonna focus on managing projects today. And so obviously the project management office is a good candidate for that, working on project plans and schedules, but really all departments and functions in the company Every now and then they've got to manage a project. And so Smartsheet's great for that or any of these other activities that collaborative work um, is required. They are good candidates for a Smartsheet or Smart Confo Smart solution. Smartsheet integrates with the leading cloud applications. So most of the applications that you have in your company today, we can pretty easily integrate with those if you need that. So let's jump into the live demo. So I'm gonna switch over to a browser. And here we go. And we're looking at, uh, I've logged in as myself to Smartsheet. You can see a, a Confo workspace. One of the things I love about Smartsheet is the ability to really organize your work so that things are easy to find, easy to share. And in the Smartsheet overview video on our YouTube channel, you can see a lot more detail on that. But let's, um, let's talk about what we're gonna see today. So uh, I've got a, a basic Gantt script to kind of take you through. And I'm actually looking at that on my mobile device. Um, Smartsheet is mobile enabled. So you can work just as easily on your phone, your tablet as your laptop. And so I'm actually gonna look at my cheat sheet on uh, my tablet, uh, my iPad as we go through. So to start off with, uh, Smartsheet has multiple views and I wanna take you through those. Uh, right now we're looking at the Gantt view. So you can see that we've got um, as required a minimum of two dates, a start and finish date that drives our timeline. Uh, I won't walk through every column now cause I'm gonna take that through you as I build a project plan in Smartsheet. But over to the right, then you can see the, the timelines and the Gantt charts and the dependencies. Uh, so this is Gantt view 
works like, feels like Microsoft Project or any other project program. So it's very easy for users that know Project to immediately jump into Smartsheet and start working. The other view, and probably the most common, is the grid view. So I'll switch over. Grid view is a spreadsheet view. And so it looks, feels, and behaves very much like Excel uh, or Google Sheets. And so that makes it very easy for you or your users to um, be effective from day one using Smartsheet. A lot of the formulas will be familiar to you uh, and you can learn the additional kind of power and functionality as you go. The next view is a card view. And so that is very helpful if you use agile project management. We've also used it for IT trouble tickets as an example. And here, what I've done is just put different lanes in for each, um, each owner of a task. So uh, you can imagine if you wanted to, you could drag tasks back and forth, that sort of thing when you're managing the project. And finally, calendar view. Calendar view requires that your sheet has at least one date column and it allows you to display tasks or items on a calendar. And so you can see where things line up from a, from a time perspective. So for our purposes today, we're going to uh, stay in Gantt view, which is a project. And what we'll do is actually move over and um, let's go ahead and create a new plan. So we can come over here. If I right click and choose project, I'm going to make a new project. So I'm just going to call this demo project. I can open that up. And you'll see by default, uh, my task duration, predecessors, all that sort of thing. Now, I also have the ability to import. So if I come over here, I can right click again and I can import something from Microsoft Excel. So let's do that. I'm gonna come over here. This is some work that we did with a solar fab several years ago, a very simple, um, installation of a tool. Let's open that up. When you get that, you've got to designate the column headers so it knows how to label each column. And you can make a choice whether to include formulas or not. We'll just do that. Uh, I've opened that up just now. You can see that it opens in grid view because I, I imported an Excel sheet. But if I have a start date and end date, column, uh, then I can easily look at it in Gantt view and manage it like a project. So I'll move this over here and we can see it there. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go ahead and discard that. I'm not going to save it. Uh, you can also import from Microsoft project. So let's do that. Let's do an example of that. Again, a past solar fab project. We've got some old project plans there. And just now, so you can see that I see which one I'm working on. I can open that up. And you'll see that it opens up in project view. It's got all the functionality. It's, it's preserved everything. So important functionality here is it's very easy to collaborate or to use your current assets. So if you've got things that you're managing in Excel, you've got things that you're managing in project right now, very easy for you to bring those in to Smartsheet. Uh, it's also very easy to get things out. So you can come in and you can choose to export into Excel uh, or into Project, or you can see these other options that you have here. So let's, um, let's go back and I'll go ahead. I won't save this, I'll discard this. And we have our demo project. So I'm gonna walk you through um, each of the columns and how you would initially manage a project in Smartsheet. So if we come in here, let's, uh, let's just begin our, our first task. And so task name is a description of the task that you have. Uh, you know, if, when we do really complex projects, we'll add a column and do a task ID. 
Um, but for basic project management, you don't need that. Uh, next, you have the duration. So that represents the amount of time that um, you need to complete that task. You know, so let's say, let's start with a, with a five days, all right? And you can designate hours, minutes, even seconds, weeks, months, if you desire to do that. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, the start date, so when are you gonna start working that task? You can uh, scroll down and do a calendar picker. So let's do that. And then uh, automatically, if you've got a duration, it will drive the finish date, okay? Uh, predecessors, we'll show those in a minute. So let's make a, uh, we'll come back when we make another task. You can assign this to someone. So let's assign it to myself. And one of the great, great functionalities is the ability to enable an automation. And now by default, uh, anytime someone is assigned to a task on this project sheet, uh, they will get a notification that they've been assigned to a task. And, and that'll happen on a daily basis. Uh, I can make that happen instantly, weekly, hourly. That's all easily configured by the user. Um, percentage complete, this will be important from a, uh, a perspective of resource allocation and also from showing uh, completion on the, let's make this 25%. Uh, you can see that my Gantt bar now reflects what's, what has happened. And since I'm 25% done, I've actually, I'm actually in progress. So let's save that. So this is very helpful for um, uh, reporting and for um, formatting based on conditions. Now let's uh, go into a little bit more. So the, there you've got your status line and then we have a comments line. And uh, on the comments line, you can make comments, but if you wanna go in more depth and have a conversation, so I'll just, uh, you know, you'd make a relevant comment of some sort. Uh, but let me come back down here. One of the beautiful collaboration things is you can come into the conversation column and converse with folks. So I'm going to make a note to uh, myself and the other system and say, uh, um, need specs to finish task one. So now uh, when I'm playing the role uh, with that login as M. Fritch, which is a different login for me from demo purposes, uh, I'll get a notification that uh, MFTEA needs that information. And you can see on my tablet that a notification just popped up telling me that, uh, hey, um, somebody needs something from you. So, uh, and there'll be a, a, a tracking of this throughout, which makes the collaboration really, really easy. So let's go ahead and do another task. And now we have pre predecessors. And of course, predecessors drive the other tasks. So I'm gonna say that task two can't begin until I've done task one. And so you can see that it, it automatically drives those dates. Uh, I'll leave it in at one day. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and assign myself into this task. And again, I'm playing different roles here, so it, uh, it's not as compelling to see. Um, let's call this 10% and in progress. And now what about work breakdown structures and subtasks as part of the dependencies? So let's do this. And I've got two tasks that are underneath this. So task, subtask 3.1, subtask 3.2. So to make those a subtask, I just need to um, demote them underneath. All right. And now these will drive task three, the task above. And so let's go ahead and, and play with my predecessors again. Let's say that this one needs both one and two. 
to start. And that task 3.2 needs task four. And I'm gonna make this duration three days and this one week. All right, so you can see that um, these roll up and drive the total duration for task three. Uh, I've got my, my predecessors driving it and I can come over here and assign it to other folks. So let's assign it to this person. Let's assign it to me again. And I'm gonna hit save and I'll get some notifications about that. Um, we'll go ahead and say that these are not started. And so now we've got, uh, we've got the information here. We also have the ability to look at history. So if I right click on a cell, I can view that cell history and I can see that I first made a comment back on the 9th at 1228 p.m. Some of the other functionality I have is I can come in here, let's say I, I wanna look at the calendar differently. I can look at my timeline. I can change the label. Instead of showing assigned to, I could have the task name. Uh, I can make the top be uh, months and the next line weeks if I want. Let's go ahead and apply that. By default, I could have it open to today's date. Uh, I also have the ability to look at critical path. So if I come over here and show critical path, that will show me the timeline that's the longest pole in the, in the tent. And so I can understand where things are versus critical path. And if I wanted to really focus in, I can come over and do this filter and uh, I'm gonna create a new filter. And I'm actually gonna share it with everybody that uses this sheet. And so, row is on the critical path. I'm gonna go ahead and include the parent rules and I'm gonna apply. And so uh, I've got everything on critical path now, so it's not gonna show up. But if I take a task four, and I just make its predecessor one. It is not on the critical path, so it won't be highlighted. Now, the assign to is important for a couple of reasons. I told you already that we have an automation so that we can give notifications. And you can see it very easily here. Um, trigger when rows are added or changed. Let's edit this. It's going to alert us. It's going to do it daily. As I said, we could do it hourly. Very easy to change and update. But the other thing that the assigned to is important for is resource allocation. So I can come over here to resource management. And by default, it's not enabled, but it's easy for me to come over and say, I want to enable resource management based on the assigned to column. So once I do that, now I've got a view of where folks are assigned uh, and I can click here and see that I'm over allocated. So if I open the resource view, I can see that I'm assigned to multiple tasks, not only on this sheet, but on every other sheet in the system. And so I can see, oh gosh, on Friday, I'm assigned uh, you know, at 400%. Well, let's say that you are, um, you've got folks working on multiple things, but they aren't working full time. You can come in and it's very easy to add a column. I'll insert a column to the right. And I'm gonna add allocation. And let's see what happens if I go 10% and 10%. Now it may not make a difference because I've been doing so many demos that I've uh, over allocated myself more and more again. Uh, but we got to come in here and on the resource management, we take a look and we do have an allocation col column now. So we do that. And so um, I'm still over allocated because I have so many projects, but if I click, you can see that that over allocation has dropped down because on the demo project, 
I'm only in at 10% for each of these tasks. So you can really manage and understand where your folks are and what they're doing. So that is uh, what we wanted to cover. This is the basic functionality. There's a lot more that you can do with it. And so again, uh, stay tuned for uh, future webinars or check out the Confo YouTube channel to see and find out more. And just uh, for the last step, uh, I'll have this in the comments, but there's a help request form uh, if you'd like to see more, or you can go and watch the Confo YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll have this recording up shortly. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop the recording now and take questions after.